Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name's Audrey. My husband and I have eight children and we live on a six acre homestead in the Midlands of South Carolina. Now our oldest two boys are grown and out of the house, so we have six children here at home and my mother-in-law lives on our property with us as well. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about food storage. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that food storage is a bit of a passion of mine. I actually really consider it somewhat of a hobby. Um, it's not something that I obsess about. I don't do something related to food storage every day, but we do produce a lot of food on our homestead. Our goal is always to produce more next year than we did this year. We have about 30 laying hens. We are in the process of breeding dual purpose birds so that we can do a round of meat chickens every quarter. And we have two dairy cows coming, a cow and her calf after the first of the year. And we're super excited about that. As we all are very much aware, food prices have continued to rise. 2022 has seen the highest food prices, especially in the U.S., that we've ever seen in our lifetime. For those living paycheck to paycheck, this has been a life-changing increase, and my heart goes out to you. As we see things continue to get worse and prices continue to rise, I began thinking about the absolute bare necessities and kind of an absolute worst case scenario situation. So we grow food on our little homestead pretty much year round. I have a greenhouse full of broccoli and celery, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts right now. This is my first full winter growing brassicas, so we will see how that goes in the greenhouse, but I am hopeful. I also have kale, lettuce, and spinach growing in containers on my front porch. These are things that anyone can do, even if you are in a small apartment. We have a very young orchard on our property that is not producing anything yet. We have 14 trees in our orchard now, ranging from apples, peaches, pears, cherries, figs, lemons, and one cold hardy avocado tree. They're all fairly young, but we should receive some fruit off some of them next year. But the point of this video is I was sitting in car line last week and I started doing some math and I thought, you know, if things got really, really hard, if we saw major food shortages or civil unrest or prices just got so high that we just could not justify continuing to purchase them at that high a price. What are the things that would be most important, the staples that would be most important for my family? And I thought flour, rice, oats, and beans. Anything else beyond that would be bonus, you know? We can survive without fruits and vegetables for a period of time, probably a long period of time. But ideally, you would be able to forage things, get things from um, local farmers, and hopefully you're growing things on your property as well. But I made a list because I wanted to be able to break it down per serving or per day, definitely per pound, to see what I would need to be able to make one or two loaves of bread. I think I figured one loaf of bread per day. So that means you would also need salt, yeast, and a fat of some sort if you want it to taste really good. You can make a very simple no-need bread with nothing more than water, salt, flour, and yeast. So this is what I considered when calculating our numbers. Again, we're talking about a worst case scenario kind of situation where let's just say we don't have any access to a grocery store or our local grocery stores are completely out of what we need, just these four simple staples for six months at a time. But my goal has always been for my family to have about a year's worth of food in our house. And I don't feel because we are growing things seasonally and trying to eat things seasonally, I don't necessarily find it necessary to store a year's worth of vegetables, definitely not a year's worth of fruit. Those are things that would just be extra if we were able to produce them or find them. If you are not new here and you've seen any of my pantry tours in the past, you know that we store a lot of fruits, vegetables, and other items in our pantry. Uh, we produce and preserve a ton of our own vegetables and we get lots of fruit from local orchards. And our goal is definitely to eventually produce enough fruits and veggies on our homestead for an entire year. My point is just that we can survive without it. I am calculating one cup of oats per day per person, and that's cooked oats, one cup of cooked beans, a cup of cooked rice, and making one loaf of bread per day. 
And again, everything else would be extra. So if you want to store sugar, I would highly recommend you have plenty of salt on hand and other seasonings. Okay, to give you some perspective, one pound of dry rice equals about seven and a half cups of cooked rice. One pound of dry old fashioned oats, which is about five cups, would equal 10 cups of cooked oats. One pound of dried beans, which is about three cups of dried beans, gives you six cups of cooked beans. And you need about four cups or one and a quarter pound of flour to make a single loaf of bread. So I crunched all the numbers and basically it comes down to my family needs about 400 pounds each of rice, beans, and oats, and about 450 pounds of flour. Now in my house, I prefer to store about half what we need in regular all-purpose or bread flour and then the other half in the form of whole wheat. I do have a wheat grinder, I have a manual one and I have an electric one and that would definitely up our nutrient value tremendously if we had some fresh ground whole wheat flour in our bread as well. So when I calculated prices and things, I did include some of our flour needs in the form of whole wheat. Now the next thing I would suggest you do, first of all, calculate your family's needs, and then you can go online to your favorite places to shop. And don't forget to look at places like Azure Standard as well, where you can get bulk items for sometimes significantly cheaper than even conventional items at the grocery store. And I priced out those items according to how much we need. For example, 50 pounds of organic oats from Azure Standard is about $62. I already have 100 pounds in my food storage, so we need about 300 pounds more, and that comes out to $372. A 12-pound bag of dried pinto beans from Sam's Club is about $11. Again, we already have about 100 pounds of dried beans in our house, so we need 300 pounds more, and that total would be about $275. 50 pounds of dried white rice, and this is just plain long grain rice from Sam's Club, is $21. We already have 100 pounds of rice in our food storage, so we need 300 pounds more, and that would equal about $126. 50 pounds of organic hard white wheat from Azure Standard, is $65. We already have at least 150 pounds of wheat and white flour in our food storage, so we need about 300 pounds more. And if I were to buy all 300 pounds in organic hard white wheat, the total would be $390. If I went on the super frugal side and purchased 400 pounds of just plain white all-purpose flour from Sam's Club, a 25 pound bag is about $12. So I could get 400 pounds of all-purpose flour for just $200. That's pretty incredible. So let's just say I wanted to go out today and top off our bean and grain needs for my family for an entire year. I could get the rest of what I need for beans, white rice, oats, and flour, and my total would be about $972, so less than $1,000 to have an entire year's worth of oats, beans, rice, and bread. I already have a year's worth of oil. We have more than a year's worth of spices, salt, and sugar. And so my goal for the next three months is to divide that up by three. And by the end of February, we will have in our food storage a year's worth of oats, beans, rice, and flour and wheat to make bread for our family for an entire year. We also crunched some numbers and realized that six months worth of all of our animal feed is about $500, which is not bad at all considering how many animals we have. Of course, that does not include the cows yet, but the cows will heavily be using our pasture along with some of our neighbor's pasture, and we may or may not supplement some grains while we're milking. We would rather have less milk and be able to strictly pasture feed our cows than to have a big financial burden of grains for the cows. So we will just take that one month at a time when the cows arrive. My main goal in this video is just to motivate you to start thinking about your very basic staples 
and how economical it is to really store six to 12 months of food for your family. I'm sure most of your families are nowhere near as large as ours, so that no matter how hard things get in the future, you have what you need to feed your family. One extremely important thing to keep in mind is how and where you are going to store all of these things if you choose to purchase what you need for a year's worth for your family. I always recommend freezing your grains first for three days before you store it in long-term storage. Once I have let my grains return to room temperature, I stick it in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers and then either up high in a cabinet or in Rubbermaid totes or five gallon buckets. Of course, this is not taking into consideration a grid down scenario. I think that is highly unlikely for the majority of us, but it is totally up to you whether or not you are prepared for that as well. We do have some off grid preparations. I could certainly cook a lot. Really all of what I mentioned in this video, I could prepare in my cast iron Dutch oven over a fire outside. There would be a huge learning curve and probably many burnt pots of oatmeal, rice, and bread, but I have no doubt we could figure it out eventually. I will leave some links to other food storage videos in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.